My name is Magister Breitweiser. We are the Latin teachers in the middle school, and we're here to tell you a little bit more about the Latin language, what we do in Latin class, and why you should choose to take Latin next year. You might be saying to yourself, Self, wait a minute. Who are these people, and what are they talking about? I don't even know what Latin is. Well, Latin was the language that was spoken by the ancient Romans who lived and ruled 2,000 years ago. The ancient Romans started out in a small city in Italy called Rome, but that city grew and Rome became a huge empire that ruled over most of Southern Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. Even though the Romans lived so long ago, our art, culture, language, sports, and technology were greatly influenced by them. Wait, wait, wait. The Romans lived so long ago? Does anyone speak Latin now? Isn't Latin a dead language? Latin is alive and well around the world. More people than ever are starting to learn Latin now. Even though there are no more ancient Romans, people around the world enjoy reading their stories and speaking their language. We even write our own stories together in class to share with your family and friends. This way, Latin always stays alive. But isn't Latin a hard language to learn? Latin is easy. You already know a lot of Latin words and phrases. Did you know that about 60% of English words come from the Latin language? Even better, 90% of words that have more than two syllables come from the Latin language. Latin is also the mother tongue of Spanish, French, Italian, and Portuguese. If you learn Latin, it will be much easier for you to learn one of these other languages later in high school or later in your life. And there's very little homework. So, what do we do in Latin class? In Latin class, we learn about the culture of the ancient Romans while we're learning their language. Did you ever look at a football stadium and wonder, hey, why does it look like this? Well, modern football stadiums are modeled after the Colosseum. This is where gladiator fights took place. In class, we read stories about gladiators and learn about why the Romans liked to watch them fight to the death in the arena. Have you read any of the Percy Jackson series about the gods and goddesses of ancient Greece and Rome? We learn all about the different gods and goddesses in Latin class. We read stories about the myths of these gods and goddesses. We talk about the rulers of Rome from the kings to the heroes to the emperors. The leaders did some brave, exciting, and sometimes funny things. Did you know that Emperor Caligula loved his pet horse so much that he decided to make his horse a senator of Rome? But we also read about a diverse group of women, men, and children all over the world. Our students love to learn about the one-eyed warrior queen, Amana Reina, from Africa, who defeated the Roman army and saved her people. We also learn about the lives of everyday people. What types of clothes did they wear? What type of food did they eat? Food? Yes. Would you like to have a Roman banquet? The Romans ate many of the same foods you do, and a few you don't. We won't feed you any Dormice or Flamingo Tongues, though, promise. We have a lot of fun in classes, playing games, interacting with our classmates, watching videos, and so much more. Hey, Magistra, what else is there to look forward to if you choose to take Latin next year? In the high school, the Latin students get the opportunity to go on a trip to Italy with the Latin teachers. They spend a whole week visiting different places in Italy. They go to Pompeii to see the city that was covered in ash by a volcano. They go to Rome to visit the Colosseum, the Forum, the Pantheon, and many other sites. They even travel north to visit cities like Florence and Pisa with its leaning tower. They also go south to Naples and the island of Capri, where the Emperor Tiberius had a secret getaway. There is also a Latin club in the middle school and in the high school. In the middle school, we play games, go on scavenger hunts, do arts and crafts, eat snacks, and have parties to celebrate the different festivals in the ancient world. In high school Latin club, they carve pumpkins at Halloween, have a gladiator tournament in the spring, and they have a day where they eat lots of gelato. Wow, there's so much to do in Latin class. The great thing about Latin too is that it's really helpful for your future. Some students take Latin because they want to learn the language that will help them improve their scores on tests like the SATs 
or help them stand out to colleges and universities. Year after year, Latin students do better on the SATs than other students. Colleges love Latin students because there are fewer places that teach Latin than Spanish or French, so it really makes you stand out of the crowd. People who want to become doctors, veterinarians, scientists, musicians, lawyers, and many other professions find that by learning Latin, they have a head start in learning the academic vocabulary of their area. Any career that you choose will have words that come from Latin. Also, by taking Latin, people will think you're smart, even if you're not that smart. Students who choose Latin create a fun family. Our students tell us that some of the best things that have come from Latin are the friendships that they make with their classmates and teachers. Magistra Griswold, the high school Latin teachers, and I love to make Latin fun for everyone. You have four amazing languages to choose from, but we hope that you choose Latin and we can't wait to see you next year. While late to dis Chen and I take SUNY 201. I remember sitting in your shoes as a sixth grader and I didn't know what language I was going to choose and but I chose Latin because I saw well first I chose it for Harry Potter but I also chose it because they enticed me with academic perks and knowing about English and all their vocabulary and I certainly learned that but Latin is so much more too. One of the biggest parts for me was that as a musician I've always struggled with Italian terms because they never made sense to me and I never, I never wrapped my head around them, especially because they didn't have good English counterparts. However, when I was taking Latin, I started drawing connections between Italian and Latin, and suddenly I could understand these Italian terms more even if I didn't have to look them up. And I, my whole music game was elevated. So not just the academic perks where English words that are more than three syllables usually come from Latin and SAT vocab, but also just learning music and just applying it to your everyday life, Latin has become so pivotal. I chose Latin because I had a great interest in Greek and Roman mythology. I've had the best time taking Latin, and the teachers are absolutely amazing. I've loved taking Latin these past five years, and I'm always happy to go to class. I've truly enjoyed taking Latin, and I hope you do too. I took Latin because of the history involved, and it actually ended up being one of my favorite classes. I actually ended up convincing my brother to take it too, so you should do it. Much. It also really helps when you're trying to learn terminology for biology or chemistry and you're trying to memorize the periodic table. And because so many of the elements do come from Latin, it just makes memorizing and learning the periodic table so much easier. But it's not all studying, as Latin class is very fun. The teachers are very nice, have interactive programs, and offer a lot of help along the way. And I can guarantee you that you will find diverse people there. And Magistra Griswold is awesome. Hi, I'm Anna and I'm in 12th grade and I take SUNY Latin 201. And I think you should take Latin because it'll improve the, your English um, language skills and make you sound smarter. You also will stand out um, when you apply to college because colleges like that you took Latin. Your SAT scores will likely be higher because there's a lot of bigger, tougher words on the test. And with your knowledge of Latin, you can dissect those words and make them smaller and understand them better. Also, you have the opportunity to go to Italy, which I did and I 100% recommend. And I probably ate like 20 pounds of gelato while there. So that's also a thing that you can look forward to. And also, you will have a ton of inside jokes among all the Latin people um, from all the years of taking it. Um, like one joke would be like Caecilius S. in Horto, which you probably don't understand, but I guess you're going to have to take Latin to find out what it means. Wale ta. This is Magister Griswold just one more time. We're almost done, but we need to go over some final notes on the language selection process. All of the world language teachers want you to know that every language is a great choice. Also, as Senor Daly told you in the introduction, 
you will need to make a first and a second choice. We've really tried to put you into your first choice, but sometimes scheduling class sizes and other issues come up and it can make this difficult. For that reason, we ask you to make a good second choice. Your choices are really important because you will continu continue to study your language into high school. Every year, we are asked which language is the easiest. Your parents, counselors, and even other non-world language teachers will probably have opinions on this and maybe even have shared them with you already. We want you to know that those opinions on which language is the easiest should not affect your language choice. Choose the language that you're willing to work at because that will be the language that is easiest for you. In all languages, you're going to have to pay attention and do work. You'll probably definitely have tests and quizzes. You'll definitely learn a lot of vocabulary. That's the basis of the language. You'll create projects. You'll interact with your classmates. You'll get to play games. You'll get to sing songs you'll experience culture, and you'll have fun. This year, language selection is all via Google Form. A link to the Google Form will be sent via SIS to your parents and to you directly via your email account. The link will go live on Thursday, February 3rd at 6 p.m. and close at 10 p.m. on Wednesday, February 9th. Keep in mind that you will need to make a first and a second choice and that students who do not submit the form by the due date will almost certainly not receive their first choices. If you have questions, please contact one of us at our Shen School's emails. We hope you've enjoyed our presentations today and we wish you a healthy and happy weekend. Waleta, auf Wiedersehen, adios, au revoir.